All right, and today, guys, uh, we're going to be talking about politics in this video. Uh, there was some big news out of Cambodia uh, recently, and I don't really talk about politics on here that much, whether it's American politics or Khmer politics. All right, we got a little whiner. Seems a little loud. Um, but with Cambodian politics specifically, I don't, uh, I don't necessarily have enough information to really make concrete arguments about, you know, what's best for Cambodia or, you know, what's right or what's wrong. Um, so, for example, like U.S. politics, I've been watching very closely and have been actively engaged in it for, you know, maybe 10 years or so, whether, whatever, doing, I, I've done gone to like protests and rallies and even hosted some and uh i'm always very uh observant of what's happening politically and i've you know formulated my ideas changed some things based on you know other evidences and facts that have been brought forward so u.s politics i feel like i know pretty well com maybe compared to the average person i feel like i feel like i know more about U.S. politics compared to just an average person uh, obviously, that's not true for Cambodian politics. I've only been living here for like a year uh, or a year, you know, a year and four months or whatever. And I try to read up on it and I try to understand it. Uh, so there was a guy, uh, Kem, let me look to make sure I'm saying his name correctly. Kem Soka, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, so he was the leader of the uh, rival party, uh, the Cambodian. Uh, National Rescue Party and he was recently arrested and the party was dissolved and it has caused a lot of controversy here so I just want to talk about it just a little bit so I'm gonna to try to just stick to facts uh, obviously I have some opinions but again if I'm if I'm wrong about something or I don't understand something or I'm stating it the right wrong way let me know I'm not, I'm not trying to discuss this in a way that uh, is so controversial I just I'm going by the information that I have and going by information that's not like Cambodian government propaganda information this is stuff that is internationally recognized I should have brought my fan in here it's the first time like making a video in my room I think and I don't have my fan in here right now and I'm sweating but anyway this is uh you know information that is as far as I can tell the most accurate and honest information as to uh, kind of what's going on here. So I think we have to take a step back for a minute. Uh, so if we look at what's happened recently with Cambodia, so you guys probably know if you're thinking about coming here, uh, Cambodia in the 70s went through a, a very dark period uh, where there was a group called the Khmer Rouge and they kind of overthrew the government, um, essentially you know, eliminated half of the population of Cambodia uh, especially people who were educated, people who were teachers, people who had knowledge, people who could read and write even, uh, any of those kind of things. So what happened was the Khmer Rouge took over Cambodia. These are Cambodians. This wasn't some out, outside entity. This is, you know, a civil war uh, or a civil disobedience that occurred. And the Khmer Rouge took over. Now there was a guy called uh, Hun Sun, and he was part of the Khmer Rouge at the time. And after a while, uh, he realized like, hey, everything that's going on right now is really messed up. And he defected to Vietnam. So he went to Vietnam and he used his inf inside information about what he knew about the Khmer Rouge and he helped Vietnam come in and uh, essentially eliminate the Khmer Rouge. Uh, so he was you know, instrumental in that, in that effect. Then, uh, I believe in the early 80s, I think it was 83, maybe 85, I think it was 83, he became Prime Minister of Cambodia. Uh, and when he became Prime Minister, Cambodia was in shambles. Uh, again, this was a country that was torn apart by war. Uh, all of the, or the majority of people who were educated, people who could read and write and had actual skills and could do things did not exist anymore in the country. They were all slaughtered. Um, so along the way, uh, you know, he was prime minister and eventually uh, brought Cambodia to what it is today. And again, Cambodia is now, it's a very developing country. 
Uh, it's come an incredibly long way since the time of the Khmer Rouge. Now, whether Hun Sun has done everything correctly or to the best of his abilities uh, or made you know a perfect decision every time, I don't know. I can't. I don't have enough information about that. But what I can what I can see is that Cambodia, you know, 30 years ago, this is very recently that this happened, you know, 40 years ago when the Khmer Rouge was here and since Hun Sun took over, Cambodia has came a very, very long way. Uh, economically, in terms of the country, the country is doing, you know, pretty good. It's, it's growing rapidly. Uh, in terms of uh, poverty, poverty is all of the time decreasing. Every year it gets lower and lower. And again, it came from shambles, and now it's this you know, super developing, quickly developing country. Uh, so regardless of your opinion of Hun Sun uh, and whether he did everything right, I don't know. But the end result as to what it is now, I mean, I imagine that was a very tough thing to figure out how to do. So that being said, so that's the first part. The second part is this, uh, so the fella, uh, Kem Soka, Saka. So like I said, he was the leader of the opposition party here. And again, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read you a quote of, this is what got him in trouble and this is what kind of got the party dissolved. Uh, this is not hearsay, this is not speculation. He was on Australian uh, media and this is actual audio that he has of him saying this. This is in, you know, he said, she said, type of stuff. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna read it the first time as him, and then I'm gonna read it again, and I'm gonna change just a couple things around. And see, like, I have to, my opinion is, he messed up. <laughs> like, there's no way around it. All right, so this is, this is what he said. This is Sem Saka speaking, uh, to quote, before changing the top level, we need to uproot, uproot the lower one. The USA, which has assisted me, has asked me to take the model from Yugoslavia, Serbia, where they were able to change the dictator, Milosevic. I don't just do what I feel. I have experts, university professors in Washington, D.C. and Montreal, Canada, hired by the Americans in order to advise me on strategy to change the leaders. Okay, so that's the quote from him. But let's put this in a context of, imagine we were in the U.S. So imagine if Donald Trump had said this. I'm going to change a couple things. I'm going to read the exact same quote. We're just going to imagine for a second Donald Trump said this. Or we're going to imagine if you're so on board with Donald Trump and he could never you know, do anything wrong, imagine Barack Obama said this. It really shouldn't matter. So I'm going to change a couple of things, just a couple of little words here, <laughs> mostly just one location, and tell me if... This would not be, you know, if this, if Donald Trump or whatever candidate you're thinking about in the U.S. was running, if they said this quote, if it would not dismiss them from being eligible to run for a president. So again, this is not a true quote because Donald Trump never said this. Let's pretend it was him. Uh, before changing the top level, we need to uproot the lower one. Russia, which has assisted me, has asked me to take the model from Yugoslavia, Serbia, where they were able to change the dictator, Milosevic. I don't just do what I feel. I have experts, university professors in Moscow and Beijing, China, hired by the Russians in order to advise me on the strategy to change the leaders. Like, again, I feel like no matter what your opinion is on it, he's very openly admitting that he's allowing the U.S. to advise his campaign. You can't have an outside country dictating your campaign to overthrow your government. Like, obviously, as, so people are saying, like, democracy is failing in Cambodia, and I see all these headlines. And again, I don't know enough. I don't know. Hussein, or Hussein, uh, Hun Sen may be a, you know, a bad leader. I haven't been here long enough. I can only look at the data and what has been, you know, going on in the past 30 years and I can only 30 years and I can only look at the information that I have. 
I haven't been here long enough to really experience it, so my opinion may be invalid. It might not be true. But regardless of that, you can't openly admit that you're using the U.S. to overthrow a democratic election and then turn around and say when that person is um, you know, called out on that and then say, oh no, democracy is failing. Democracy failed regardless, regardless, if you're in the right, the, the problem is now he lost the moral high ground. There's no, there's no democracy, there's no morality to it. So again, I don't know. And I would feel bad, maybe this guy was an awesome guy and maybe he would have made Cambodia even better than it was, I don't know. But you can't have the US meddling in your election and then openly being like, yeah, I'm using you know, the US and Canada and the Americans are hiring people to advise me on strategy. You can't do that. You just cannot do that. Um, so that is equally as invasive to democracy as anything Hun Sun may have done. Uh, all right. So guys, that's my little take on it. Again, I don't, I don't want anybody to get mad at me if, if you have this very strong feeling uh, toward the CNRP or whatever. I'm not sitting here and praising one party or another. I'm not. I'm just going by the limited amount of information I have as a foreigner and the limited amount of, you know, factual things that I could dig up uh, to kind of create a little bit of an opinion. Uh, but I'm very open to uh, honest discussion and figure out more information. All right, guys, this is Halfway Broadcasting from around the world, Phenomenal 10 Cambodia. Peace.